In today's video, we're going to look at how to manage your day if you've just started working for yourself as an interior designer. It can be really confusing when you first start working and all of a sudden you're at your desk, you're like tidying everything up and you think, okay, I'm ready to start. For those of you who already have a project, you probably start the reactionary approach where you just deal with what's coming through and you just deal with that as it comes in. Um, but for others, it'll be, okay, kind of like reorganizing a desk, uh, kind of clicking through here, scroll on social media, uh, maybe get up, make another cup of tea or coffee. And then all of a sudden it gets to a certain point in the day and you start to panic because you haven't done anything. <laughs> the first, those first few times or the first changes when you're going through from working in an office potentially or not working at all, uh, perhaps you were minding kids and all of a sudden you're going to, you're the business owner, you're the person who's doing all the work, you're the solopreneur who is now doing everything in your business or predominantly everything. And it can be really confusing how you are going to fit everything into your day, get everything done when time slips away really, really quickly. So today I've got my action plan for you as to what I do um, and how I deal with um, figuring out how to manage my day as a busy mum, as a person who has multiple businesses and somebody who also is the person who does most of the work in my own business. So enjoy and hopefully you can take things away from this. So the first thing to manage your day or to start looking at managing your day is to scrutinize that day. Have a look at where you're wasting time, how you're spending your time and what it is that you're actually doing. I think well, data, having data and proof is really fantastic. And this is good, uh, a good habit to get into as a business owner anyway. So just collecting the data on how you're managing a day can be really quite a simple exercise, but really, really telling. And so all you have to do is write down, uh, some people can use their phone. I'm a bit more old fashioned. I like to write everything down. So just grab a pen and a piece of paper and literally every hour set an alarm. I, I do a stopwatch. And then uh, manage or write down what you did in that hour. I know people who did every 15 minutes. That's a bit wild, <laughs> uh, a bit too much for me. But um, if you could do 15 minutes, uh, that's even better. Um, but the idea is just to get uh, an understanding of where you're leaking time, um, potentially social media, all the distractions, um, deliveries, things that come in when you've started working from home and that you're still dealing with that you might need to start um, having a look a little bit deeper into and start organising uh, with a partner or somebody else who can help you to say that, or even if they are deliveries, start um, maybe getting them collected somewhere rather than coming to your house and just interrupting something. So these are all the things that you can start to analyse once you have the data. So unless you have the data, you can't really, or you can guess, but our memories are uh, very fickle things. They love to distort information. And so because of that, having the physical data and analyzing the facts, once you have them in front of you, is really the key. The next is to focus on the one thing. If you haven't read the book by Carrie Keller, uh, The One Thing, it's going to give you um, the kind of step-by-step -step process to help you focus on the one thing that is going to move the needle for you the most in your business. So the most important thing that you need to do each day to get you to your main goal. So all of those other things like reactionary emails, they come second to this one thing because this is the thing that needs to happen every day. And it's typically the one thing that most people will put aside until the end of the day because they don't have enough time to do it. So this is why you do it. The first thing as you sit down in your office or however you start your day, it's the first thing that needs to get done. But in order to know what that thing is, you need to obviously set your goals or know what where you're where what you're trying to achieve in your business and what needs to be done. So obviously those of you who haven't got any clients yet Obviously, getting clients is going to be um, one of those uh, pretty important tasks that you're going to be uh, looking at, um, focusing on as the most important or the one thing. So if you haven't yet, if you don't know what that is yet, this is where your focus is straight away. Try and figure out what that one thing is that every single day you need to do no matter what. Next is create a timetable. So this is more of a holistic 
idea rather than something you swear by minute by minute. If you can use it uh, to the second, that's fantastic. Uh, not everyone will, and I think that's okay because um, blurring the boundaries between the times is, is totally acceptable as long as you're still getting your tasks completed, such as the, the, the one thing that is the most important thing. The other tasks, um, you don't want them to slip over to the next day. Um, but again, we're in the design or creative industries. Buildings have secrets and they let us know them as soon as we pull them apart. So things don't always go according to plan. And so giving a little bit of leeway in your day. So don't fill it to the minute um, and allow yourself some time. Also some time uh, to breathe in between exercises so that you do have some time out if you want to go to the cafe and grab a coffee um, and think about something or get an idea out because creativity isn't linear. You don't just go, okay, well, I've got one hour to get my designs out. It doesn't work that way. So give yourself some creativity time, give some uh, order to your day. And that's where the, the structure in your day protects you. So this is why it's important to give it, look, create the timetable and then see how you can closely um, adhere to it. So it's just a holistic approach. Give it a chance. And then obviously um, you'll see over time how this, um, how, how successful it is um, when you're um, at least writing out what it is that you need to achieve or how you want to plan your day, really. Next is to refine your routine until it works. So... The first time you write your timetable out, you're going to think it's really idealistic and you're going to get up, go for a run, and you might do that the first day. The next day, you get up, go for a run, and you just feel a little bit different. Um, you try to fit everything in and you work till midnight or something, and all of a sudden, uh, you're a little bit more tired, so you needed to sleep a little bit longer. So things start to have a knock-on effect. Have a look at how you run that first week, the second week, and see how that timetable is working for you. What if you tried to have uh, the run every day and prioritize that, if that is what you want to prioritize in that day, um, and then see how whether pushing it to the afternoon works for you or pushing it into your lunchtime. See where it fits in the day. Refine your schedule. It's not going to be the same for everybody. And the first few times that you try a, a timetable or a schedule, it will need some change and it will need a little bit of, bit of refinement. So allow that process as part of your new change into your schedule and kind of this uh, uh, change into your new career or into working solo. So give it this time that it needs and enjoy the process of refining your schedule, finding what works and putting aside what doesn't. And finally, get dressed for work every day. I know this, is, this sounds really simple, but uh, the reality is that as interior designers, we are people people and we deal with a lot of people. That means on the phone, we should be always, always ready to have a Zoom call when the builder's calling or when a supplier wants to come and visit and drop off something. You need to feel confident at all times, whether that's just putting on a nice jacket that feels good, whether that's just putting on a piece of jewellery that makes you feel creative. Uh, obviously, I naturally go and do exercise in the morning, then I come, have a shower, and I get ready for work in the same way that I would if I was leaving the house. Part of the reason I wanted to go solo is because I wanted to live, I wanted to live and work at home. I didn't want to go to an office. And because of that, I didn't want to waste time travelling to work every day. Where I used to get my exercise, um, uh, walking to and from work, I don't get that anymore. So I do physically have to leave the house and um, exercise every day. But then I, I have to also, which I didn't at the beginning, and I found I wasn't prepared for the day in the same way that I do, that I am now, that I do uh, get dressed for work, no matter what, every single day. And that means that you feel confident, you're prepared for, you know, if you have an impromptu call with someone, someone comes to the door, a supplier, or if um, you just want to do something on social media and you've got the idea there and you just want to do it on the, in the moment. Obviously, you don't have to always have makeup on and feel, you know, like 100% doled up. 
But you do need to feel good and feel confident in yourself, whatever that means for you. For me, that does mean putting on some makeup, having washed hair <laughs> and um, having something creative like my rings on and my watch, which just that physical stimulation of having it there, almost like a pressure point around my wrist, just feels really good for me. So whatever that is for you, find out what it is and uh, narrow it down to a few little key bits and pieces, but make sure they're there every day because they will be what makes you feel confident to get up for work and know that when you're sitting at your desk dressed like a professional, you are one. And a bonus one, get out every day. Even if that is just to go for a walk, breathe some fresh air or go grab a cup of tea or a coffee from um, or a juice <laughs> from somewhere. For me, it's getting out for exercise. You, it's unbelievable how quickly you can fall into a pattern of not leaving the house. So get out every day. Speak to people if you aren't already because it can start to get really lonely when you're um, uh when you start working for yourself so just that human interaction can boost your confidence give you energy and keep you just on track um, clear your thoughts and keep you feeling like a normal human being rather than a hermit who's uh, you know spends a lot of time in front of their computer every day there you have it now you know how to manage your day when you start working solo as an interior designer if you work for yourself it can be really, really lonely. So finding that waste of time every day, trying to figure out what you need to do, then also getting out, getting dressed and really looking professional and feeling professional, knowing what to do when you sit down. All of these things will help just get rid of that uh, feeling of, of that you don't know what you're doing. It'll give you some more confidence and then it'll help you start to refine your schedule as you go along so obviously it's not going to be settled straight away but the steps are there and you've started to take action towards it so enjoy the process and tell us how you're doing in the comments below i'm joe crowback i'm an architectural and interior designer who runs my own studio here in london i'm also the founder of the interior designers business school that helps you launch your interior design business and career